Welcome to the FEMAP version 11.3 What's New video series. Post processing. We did a complete overhaul of our, we, we now call them con, our arrow plots. They used to be called contour vector plots, which was kind of confusing because we had contour plots, we had data vector, output vectors. They really didn't have anything to do with each other. We were making arrows, <laughs> so we now call them arrow plots. And we set this up so that when you pick like membrane forces, it just automatically, when you pick X, Y, or, or shear, it automatically goes and gets the other components and plots them at one time. It just does it for you. Don't worry about it. If you then press the transform button, it just transforms them. You don't have to go set up a bunch of stuff. It's just, it's so easy now to make a, a force plot, transform it in an any coordinate system, see it on screen. It changes the arrows to something that makes sense. Uh, it does the same thing if you're plotting principal stresses. It automatically switches to center arrows. It shows tension and compression. You can see what direction they are. And then it automatically picks, you pick, you know, major stresses, it picks the minor stress. But if you want to turn one of them off, you just turn one of them off and you'll just see the one at a time. Uh, there's also solid arrows if you want to make it look pretty and look nice, but you know, those are options and it, it just, it actually, they do look pretty nice. Kind of demos better than it shows. Uh, what I'm going to do, just let's just do some beam ones real quick. I'm going to sh shut off everything but my beam elements in this model. This model's got, you can barely see them, there's little stiffeners running, I mean, stiffeners running vertically, but there's little fasteners running this way. So if I go into the arrow plot, and if I go and pick uh, shear force on a beam, it automatically goes and just in, in, and draws all my beams. So you'll see, uh, you know, a tension on that little fastener. Here's his shear components. And the bigger one, same thing. You'll see tension and shear. Another nice thing you can do in here, I know that shear is YZ. I can combine those at the same time into their total shear without having to do any output calculations. And just like everything else in FEMAP, I'm going to turn on my data table and say list output contoured results to the data table and now I can sort and if I turn on the highlighter and highlight somebody oh I need to go a little bit highlighter it'll show me the highest axial stress in the model or axial force in the model in this case or if I change this to shear and I can go find that the highest shear value is right here on this element so it shows me the element ID, I can see the max shear, I can quickly tell what's the highest shear load in the fastener in this entire thing right now. I'm, I'm running in performance graphics right now and it, it just, performance graphics act a little better because it can draw the symbols, it draws the little arrows faster. That's all taken care of. A lot of things, if we can't draw it in performance graphics now, internally it falls through and draws it with the old graphics. So you, you could kind of pretty much stay in performance graphics right now. Beams you saw, but this also works for bushings. So if you got a bunch of sea bushes, you can now see the forces in the sea bush at the same time. And even just simple displacements, they'll draw with these new arrows, um, and then you can transform or do whatever you want. And we saw the listings, so you can do the sorting and all that. Uh, some free body enhancements. Uh, in Nastran, there's been some issues over the years with the, I think they had glue forces were backwards in the in the uh, grid point force balance in Nastran. So we actually, FEMAP took care of it. We would recognize it as backwards, flip it, and your things would all still be balanced. They fixed some of those, so now you don't need to turn them on and off and do any flipping. Uh, so things are squared up on free bodies. Um, but just, you know, with linear contact now, you get all you get all the free body stuff is all in the Nastran results file, and, and you, you can see total forces across, you know, joints and whatever you want to do with, with free bodies. Uh, some new listing options. We've consolidated what used to be all these different commands into one nice box. You can just list your free body data uh, much easier. And it can also go, besides the window, you can automatically send it to the clipboard at the data table, which is nice when you're messing with free body forces. And the listing, the, the, also when it's going to the data table, it actually mimics the FO6 file. So if, you, if anyone that's used to looking in the NASRAN printed results for free body information, grid point force balance, PMAP will now spit out the same thing and cut and paste. Free bodies, there are some options when you set up any new free body uh, and you know if you've got certain things you need to, I mean, the defaults are the right one usually for just making a free body but if there's something you do special you can now set the default so each time you create a free body it gets the ones you want. A small 
um, just usability enhancement. We've got charting in FEMAP. We completely rewrote it in 11.2. It's really nice. But when you're creating, like if you had a thousand transient output sets and you're plotting an acceleration of a node, you used to go, you know, create a chart, create a data series, tell it what you wanted it to be, you know, go from this from one to 1,000, and then finally go pick a node. On the studies, on the tree right now, you pick the transient study, you right click, you say, I want to do a Z acceleration plot. It asks you for the node, it makes the plot. You can pick 50 nodes, whatever you pick, it makes it all one instant shot. We added translations, accelerations, and temperatures. For most people, we thought that would be what they wanted to do. Thank <music> you.